Someday I will find out what's on the other side of the lining of the world. And if there is nothing on the other side of the lining of the world, if a sparrow in a tree is just a sparrow in a tree, then at least one voice will hurtle through the interstellar spaces, shouting, crying out, protesting. Good morning. We have a very special guest today. It's uh, Robert Haas, special guest of a uh, uh, Miłosz Festival. We all uh, know about his uh, deep connection with Miłosz. Uh, he's a trans translator, English translator, uh, translator of uh, Miłosz works. Uh, how do you feel in a Miłosz apartment? Is there something new for you? Uh, is there something surprising? I don't know how to feel. Mm -hmm. I feel a little bit shocked. I was shocked a bit to see the portrait of Carol mm -hmm. Miłosz. It, it was here mm -hmm. the last time I visited. Cheslov was still alive. Carol was dead. And the bust had been created. And it, felt slightly haunting mm -hmm. for me to see that. And it's still a bit haunting. But you know, he loved mm -hmm. these rooms. Mm -hmm. He was very happy here. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels good to be here. <laughs> it's nice. And people <coughs> mostly uh, talk uh, about uh, what you, uh, you and Miłosz uh, have in common. Is there something that uh, you would not, not agree in Miłosz, in Miłosz's works or his personality? I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I agreed with almost everything in his personality, uh -huh. with his uh, thought. My, a translator's job is not to mm -hmm. um, agree or disagree. Mm -hmm. It's to be a medium. We, we had, there were two different kinds of disagreements that we had. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the dis disagreement, often, almost always, the disagreement would be about rhythm mm -hmm. in English. A simple example would be an early poem of his, which is called Song in English, begins with the line, Earth or the Earth, do you use the, do you not use the, big question, was that mm -hmm. flows away mm -hmm. from the place, and the verb you can use at that point would either be where I stand, mm -hmm. present tense, or where I am standing, continuous present tense. Mm -hmm. And I would say, earth flows away from the place where I am standing. Mm -hmm. And he would say, no, <laughs> earth flows away from the place where I mm -hmm. stand. And I say, no, am mm -hmm. standing, because it's flowing, flowing. Mm -hmm. Am standing is more, f so, so we had those kind of arguments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All often. often. And of course, mm -hmm. he was the one who had to read the poem aloud in public, so he won the arguments. Mm -hmm. Philosophical differences, we, we both had many years of Catholic education. Um, mm -hmm. So I understood much about the way that he thought. Mm -hmm. I would often arrive on Monday morning. He would have prepared two poems, maybe new poems, maybe poems written in the 1930s, and we would work for a couple hours. Cut, doing poems that were written in 1933 and poems that were written in 2003. <laughs> Across this uh -huh. great span. It was like being alive twice mm -hmm. to go through this thing. He would say, we'd get right to work, mm -hmm. but he would say, but you're not saying what you think of the poem. Mm -hmm. He could be quite childish about okay. that. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Good poem, not a good poem. So anyway, we, we had different attitudes mm -hmm. toward some fundamental questions, mm -hmm. but I, I understood where he was, uh, we mm -hmm. say, where he was coming from, right? about uh, some kind of metaphysical shout uh -huh. and uh, for you personally uh, was that kind of uh, metaphysical uh, shout 
uh, the Hall of uh, Allen Ginsberg also because uh, you had uh, your beatnik <laughs> episode in your life. Yeah. And what is uh, what was so attracting in uh, in this uh, this movement for you? When I would go to the movies or go to a music concert, I would see the older the college students and the people just out of college, and they wore sandals black mm -hmm. jeans, mm -hmm. black turtleneck shirts, mm -hmm. some of them wore berets, and what was immediately attracting was they looked very sexy. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> sexy, so that's the key. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then uh, when I read the poetry of Ginsberg mm -hmm. at, at that age, I didn't understand it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, because he was, really, he was from New York City, mm -hmm. from an urban area, I was from California, the climate was mild, Mm -hmm. the, 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 the countryside was beautiful, and he was writing about ash cans, mm -hmm. anguish, mm -hmm. mental institute. Yes, I just didn't, yes. I didn't get it. Uh -huh. uh, years later, I did get it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and what I got was the humor and rage mm -hmm. at the unfairness and absurdity of existence. Does this kind of ra uh, uh, rage uh, pushed you to I don't know some kind of political engagement because you are uh, involved in uh, as you as you call it eco literacy. Mm -hmm. And do you think that uh, this kind of engagement is uh, something essential to a poet? No, no. Mm -hmm. And I know that Cheslov didn't think so mm -hmm. either. He would say he didn't think so, and we, he often he often said a poet ought to have a very quiet life mm -hmm. and rabbits to feed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, no, uh, one of the great American poets is Emily Dickinson, mm -hmm. who yes. wrote her poems during the Civil War, mm -hmm. during the great violent upheaval in American history. And she lived in a small town. Uh, she wrote poems of great anguish. Mm -hmm. If you read the biography, you get realize two things. One, she at a distance had fallen in love with someone who moved away. Mm -hmm. And her sister-in-law often hurt her feelings. Mm -hmm. So these poems of deep philosophical understanding of torment and suffering mm -hmm. come from uh, having an mm -hmm. uh, exchange with her sister-in-law that hurt her feelings. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary for poets huh? to be engaged. I, an individual poet, mm -hmm. but I remember during the war in Serbia when Europe was doing nothing and the Serbs were crushing people in Kosovo. Chesov wrote a poem, angry poem about inaction and we were working on it one Monday morning and it was a bit of a rant. It wasn't his greatest poem and he said to me, what do you think of the poem? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, and he said, I know, it's not very good, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's better not to write well than to be silent and be ashamed. <laughs> so okay. mm -hmm. if there were no, if artists, if no artists were politically committed, mm -hmm. it would be very bad. Mm -hmm. But not any individual artist mm -hmm. needs to be committed because the first responsibility is to their art, to what is what makes them responsive people? Some poets uh, sh uh, could be separated from the world uh, in in some way, and uh, beside, uh, uh, despite this uh, separation, uh, Miłosz was in a way involved in uh, something uh, we call uh, mass culture. Uh, he has his uh, most favorite TV <laughs> series, you know, Zlotopolsce. <laughs> And uh, it was some kind of uh, guilty pleasure for him. <laughs> do, you, do you have s s uh, such guilty pleasures? Uh, I, I do. Pop yeah. All kinds. Mm -hmm. Movies, books, mm -hmm. television, mm -hmm. sports. I have many, many <laughs> uh, guilty pleasures. But you know, Miłosz uh, was... Uh, he, re he belonged to the last generation mm -hmm. of European intellectuals mm -hmm. who really thought that the high culture he lived in was the real world, mm -hmm. um, who in his poems of the, that period looked with pity on mass culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there in his letters, uh, when he first arrived in the United States, 
he was so horrified by television mm -hmm. that he wrote a letter to the poet monk, Thomas Merton, the monk, mm -hmm. yes. living in the Cistercian monastery. And they had exchanged some letters. And Cheswav wrote to him and said, we must abolish television. It's horrifying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, and Merton said, well, it might be hard to <laughs> abolish it right now. He said, but it must be done. Uh -huh. Then later he came to love television. I say mm -hmm. I think it also educated him about American mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. And then I know that for the, for years he did not hear Polish spoken mm -hmm. every day. So when he got back to Krakow and and could watch Polish television, he was very very happy, very mm -hmm. delighted by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, thank you very much. Uh -huh. uh, thank you, dear viewers. That was uh, it. Was uh, Robert Haas. Thank you. It's a pleasure uh, to hear you talk. Yes, all pleasure mine.